typical startup. If it can go wrong, it will. It shouldn't be Murphy's Law, it should be Claudio's Law. It will go wrong. <laughs> Never ends. 63 days, controlled chaos starts now. You made it! Made it! How's it going, man? Good, you look good! Good! Yeah. See ya. Twelve new sets of tires for the big trucks. Can we find it? <laughs> what was I thinking when I woke up? Um, I was pretty thankful that Jay come and knocked on my door. Presented with a freak snowstorm. Good luck, man. Good luck. Good luck. Kill him. Yeah, too. No pressure, Dave. <laughs> Look, he's still no pressure. <laughs> you guys are the eyes. Yeah. You tell me if you're good to go. If you're good to go. We're gonna stab your pin in the ground. And Jeff, no issues. Come back, kill yeah, 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 yeah. Geese tomorrow. Right? <laughs> go, 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 go. That's good. Good job out there, man. <laughs> Bit of a kink in in the plans for the weekend and for these opening day groups. So um, Crenshaw is usually up, right? That's what he said. Okay, he's so he's sending three friends in his place yeah. and have a new group, Thomas and Smoke. And he's coming up. That's really so we have two guys that really don't know the program. Guess where I have to be Sunday night? Katy Perry. I promised my girls. This happened before March. I said yes, we can. I can take you to the Katy Perry concert. Lo and behold, Katy Perry. Katy Perry, August 31st. So I'm going to run in at some point, either before Jeff or after Jeff. He'll come back with the hunters. We'll get you guys to do the licenses, the ammo, the guns. I hope to be back by 11 or 12, and it's in your capable hands. And whoever's hunting in the morning is hunting it, and I'll be, I'll be swung. So. And I'll be in, I don't know what time, 10 or 11. Guys, these Unless guys I get a date with Katy Perry. Katy Perry concert happens to be August 31st. So the boys are all getting set up. We have our target hunts picked. Everything is under control. Uh, I am feeling a little bit apprehensive, but I mean, I got to do this for my girls. Uh, the wheels were set in motion and it's all turning back now. So uh, I'll keep in touch with them as best I can. I mean, I have nothing but faith and confidence in these guys. They, they're professionals. It's what we do, and they do it very well. So now, I can't do this opening day hunt. Uh, so Brad, Brad McKay, little Brad we call him, he will actually do the hunting. So, or so it's scheduled, if this pans out the way it's supposed to. So in the meantime, I'm gonna call Brad, let him know what's going on, and then I'm gonna triangulate these birds because this is 800 acres of peas south of this marsh. So we really have to dial it in because that's, that's a big area to cover, and if you're not on the button or on the X, it's not going to go so well. Okay, sounds good. I'm going to stop over here and see if I want this duck hunt, because it's looking pretty good. All right, buddy. All right, take it easy. Yeah. It's a little bit closer to the roost than we'd like it to be, but at this time of year, these birds are just like everybody else and every other being. They're generally lazy, and they'll only fly as far as they need to. So they've got food that's nearby. They're going to take advantage of it. So as long as they hold and far enough away and the wind holds like it's supposed to for opening day, it'll be a hunt. Uh, every hunt that we do is kind of like, like a ripe fruit. You have to pick it at the right time for it to be really, really good. And um, the other complication that this hunt has is it's got a roost that's just back about a half mile. And uh, it, it complicates things a little bit if they go in there it makes things just a little bit more tricky in the morning because it's, it's in a little close. Uh, normally what we'll do in anticipation of that, we'll just put a flag in there and then they'll go try land in there. 
they will they'll see the flag and they'll just go to the next roost which is about a mile over it's slick it works but you do have to know where the water is but i have a pin i'll show it to you on my ipad okay okay yep cool if you need to do both hunts call the boys in okay jeff you're going to watch wee's peas yep and then see what else is going on and watch brad's yep. gong show up there you need to talk to Brad and get the total update of what's going on up there. Okay. And then Jay, you're just looking for stuff. All right, so Jay, you're gonna do, you're gonna keep watching your ducks on grants and then watch those other two that you're watching. Hopefully they grow and put together. Yeah. Be ready, because if he calls you back, to okay. come in. Okay. Depending on how that goes. Cool. Cool. And I'm yeah. doing what? Katy Perry, buddy. Katy Perry. Perry. Well, that's tomorrow night. Tomorrow morning, I gotta do something. I'll have a spot. Huh. It's my 40th birthday. What a way to spend it. Looking for geese. Actually, it's a pretty good way to spend it for me. It's one of my favorite things to do. I've been hunting probably since I was 10 years old. I had parents that never hunted. I had a neighbor that used to take me as a kid. So I just really loved it from then on. So I just kept doing it, kept doing it. And now I make part of my living at it. I, hear them. I just don't see them. About two miles away, I saw a bunch of geese flying, and I think I found their roost. I don't know where they were coming from, and I don't know where they're going back to, but I do know where they're spending the day. I'd been trying to get a job deer guiding. I thought, well, maybe I'll try waterfowl guiding as well. We'll drive around here and see what we can find for a cut field, because everything in this area is not cut. And... We'll come back and have another look. I've hunted waterfowl pretty religiously for, oh, 20 years. I have it right. I can hunt ducks. I don't worry about it, right? No, no, I'm not too worried yet either. i still got two more hunts to check. Experience factor is huge. As a resident hunter, I was a high volume resident hunter, and I hunted 15 times a season. They are the ones that own that field. We'll get out of the yard here and we'll We'll make a couple of phone calls. Southwest of 23, just up to Eastland Road there, a couple of miles from your house. Thanks, Kevin. Yeah. Okay, bye. You learn all the stuff you did wrong as a resident hunter right away and try to improve on that and go from there. So Brad was here yesterday morning and uh, he had checked some this pea field over here to my left and there was quite a few geese, Canada geese going in there. A few hundred, he said anyway. This morning I come out here and check it out. And there's maybe, you know, 100 geese out here, and everything's over here behind, to the right of me here. So far, what I'm seeing is everything's going back into the peas. I don't have permission there. I have permission over here where the geese were. Uh, I haven't really seen much sign of anything actually coming over here. Everything's like on a rope. They're just sucked right in there. Started giving me a little. Well, here we are coming into a small town here just outside the lodge. Uh, we're gonna meet up with my girlfriend and uh, pick up the pick up the pooch. Pretty excited to see him. He's uh, it's only been a couple days, but he's such a gorgeous dog. He's quite the quite the creature. You have a good morning. Brad's going. <laughs> Canada's left. Canada's not a Canada. Uh. All right, so that's ducks only now. Hey yeah 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 yeah. All right, so I'll, I'll probably be back tomorrow, 10.30 or 11 noon. I'm sure I'll be texting you from the, the bleachers today. So okay. what's going on? Well, no more room for air. We have to have the hunts for tomorrow morning. We have to have good hunts for the clients. So it's a little bit nervous here. You gotta, you always are, jitters. There's no more, like yesterday, we always had one more spot in case something went wrong, but there's no more spotting sessions after tonight. Watching the field, we start. We spot it Saturday morning. We've been watching it. We've always had uh, 130 birds here on the field, and that's what it's been. We haven't. This is the first time I've ever watched a bunch of birds come in, and turns out there's probably twice as many back over another hill that we can't see as there is on the end that we can see. We're looking at about 500 geese, a couple of hundred ducks. Looks like it's going to be a target for tomorrow morning. Keep an eye on them here. Probably put this one to bed tonight, pin it. My ducks are coming back to feed again, so I'm a little happier now. Are they? Mostly specs. Yeah. 
most of them are on the other side of the road. There's a handful in with the ones I'm at. So oh, yeah. they've moved from one side of the road to this side earlier today. <laughs> and then they jumped off the one side where they were and went to a different side. But they seem to be settled down eating now good. Yeah. So I'm not too worried about it. Sounds good, buddy. All right, take it easy. in the ground, reflect the tape so I could see it in the morning. Perfect, right on the button. Current location, and the bookmarks. So what we'll do now is we'll go back to the road, we'll drop a pin at the road approach, so we know we're going in the right approach in the morning, because all this stuff looks a lot different in the pitch black. Buddy's not here tonight, so I'll run the meeting. Perfect. Get back in the morning, so nice, we'll get nice. through this. Yeah. So in the morning, we have our two hunts, both combos. So let's go over what we have for permission, so that we know what we have for options to complement what we shoot tomorrow morning. Yeah. Do we have mm -hmm. a spot for Mel? I was thinking maybe we'd send Mel yeah. north. Okay. So then, what kind of our options for tomorrow night then? What, I guess, what do you think, the volume of birds that you have, what, just, like, if the stars align, we should get it done on geese, and it might be light on ducks. Okay. That's, that's exactly, my prediction, hopefully. Okay, that's you know. exactly what we need to know. So you would definitely have a hunt if he's really light on ducks to complement that? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, if this, and then what do you think? Well, I'm th I'm not, I would think I would get my ducks. I'm going to finish up Jeff's. Yeah, so, so let's I'll go. Take, I'll take Jeff's guys. Yeah. All In a perfect day. world, that's what we're going to do tomorrow. And then Dustin takes your guys to clean the geese. Yeah, Good. perfect Good. world. Yeah. It's never a perfect yeah. world, but for now, that's our target. So, this is your list for the morning, and we're in business. Yeah. Open the day. Hopefully, everything that could go wrong has. And if that's all it was, we'll be, we'll be golden here in about 20 minutes. Well, it was a heck of a way to start the season here. We got. Slept in a little bit, and so we're a little late leaving, but not too bad. We had lots of help setting up. We had a couple of the other guys pitched in, so team effort here at Ongaro's, which makes it good. Helped out get everything set up. We need to get the blinds doubled in a little bit better. We have about 10 minutes. Yeah, he brought an extra gun. Maybe we get rid of all the drama right at the first. Bonkers right behind us here. Whoa! There goes my first Canadian. Yeah, and there went everybody else's too. <laughs> oh, I thought they were flaring. No, not to you set up. <laughs> Opening days, you're setting the bar for the season pretty much, right? You don't want to have a bad opening morning. <laughs> so I set an alarm on my phone and it didn't go off, I guess. To hindsight now, I set three alarms, <laughs> just to make sure. What were, you, what were you thinking when you woke up then? Like... I probably shouldn't say that on camera. <laughs> I was thinking, oh boy, I'm in trouble. rattled me a little bit. I was more I was more concerned with, you know, the, the lack of professionalism that that may have portrayed to a really new group of clients, you know. Um, and it had been with some of the groups that had been with me for 15, 16, 17 years, 
they probably would have went, you know, it's bound to happen once in a while or once, you know, and that's the first time we don't sleep in. I slept in. <laughs> so I implemented uh, a fail safe into it. So now instead of, you know, if one guy has to wake up at four and the other guy has to wake up at 4.30, they both get up at four. So there's just built in redundancy and two guys can't sleep in. You know, it just, it's not gonna happen. So it works, that's been resolved. Time to move on. Boy, I'll tell you, I feel a lot better now because I was worried. We could do that three more times. We got our limit of geese. Those three are looking good, though. <laughs> Kill it. Nice. Okay, there's one walking right behind the guy on the left. Nice! You got a glider. You got at least three. Luckily I had all my stuff ready the night before, so I just had to grab it and run and we made it happen. <laughs> Okay, so it's opening morning here. We just finished up our shoot. We ended up with 40 big honkers and 20 ducks, which is a pretty fair shoot if you ask me. And the first couple flocks of geese started skirting us, so I thought something was wrong, but we got that all cleared away and we got her done. Made it happen. 40 birds, 40 honkers. Yeah, a good hunt. How'd opening day go? Oh, it could have gone way worse. You know, it, it went well. I mean, and it should have. Uh, you know, despite the chaos, the guys came back at 10.30, they were smiling, there's a bunch of birds on the deck, Brad had a great hunt, Jeff had a great hunt, thank God, because that could have got ugly, and uh, yeah, we're professionals, I mean, it should have gone smoothly, you know, especially in a situation like that, I'm happy, you know, it went well. Hey Dad, we had a really bad morning, probably the worst hunt ever. 40 and 20? Yeah. Damn, Evan, you did okay. Take a picture. Well, I think you need Great. Grab them. Pick them up. They're big. We'll set them up. Evan, you got a pintail. You can't shoot pintails in Canada. Okay. They're in front of me. That's uh, two of them feeding a beak. <laughs> First two or three groups that came in, you guys couldn't shoot any of them. Yeah, we could be. Canada. <laughs> the broad side of a ball. Well, I think you need a bigger uh, hanging area. Oh, the big thing with guiding is always, you know, you're here the first day, you're so excited to get here and you're working and you get in the routine. And then with the last week or two, you're like, oh, is this ever going to be over? And then four days after you get home, you're like, geez, when does that start again? You know, you're calling up and signing up for the next season. It's just, it's, it's in you. You either love it or you don't. That's how it is. Obviously, today we got to get. Uh, ducks for your guys. Mm -hmm. So Jason, you're taking those. That hunt's looking rock solid, cool. Go, tell us about it. Water puddle hunt and peas, and uh, the ducks are puddling there and filtering out into the, uh, the pea field. So yeah, no, it should be good. Classic no-brainer? Yeah. Okay, cool. So we shouldn't have to worry about you. And then Dustin, what ended up being in there? There's probably 275 honkers in that. Maybe, I don't know, maybe 100 specs. But then there was a pile of ducks, you know. All those ducks from uh, just north, because like there was a guy in there hunting. Hunting, so they, I'm pretty sure that must. Have, they might have went over there and buzzed. They didn't look like there was much action over there. So, but they were all like pretty much locked in, just coming right to the barley. So, he's got to get it's 39 geese and two ducks. And oh, okay. So I mean, I'm not geese, even in. goose are taller, but you'll get your ducks. Ready to go. I'm not gonna believe this. Don't. Even I just start. got a text from the landowner. We're going to be in their combine. So we can't hunt tonight. 
Are you kidding me? No. No. Not at all. It's quarter it's quarter to four, Matt. I know. I'm sorry. Oh. My bad. No, it's alright. Okay, well, it's either that one or that one. Well, well we better get a road go. trip Let's on go. this road close trip. one, yeah, because that, that's the easiest one. We gotta go. Let's go do this road trip and then You call us. The road trips usually stem from when we're in a position where we're scrambling. Um, you know, if the birds are usually weather related or access related. So if a landowner, you know, that we were trying to get a hold of at 9.30 or 10 in the morning while we we're out spotting, couldn't get a hold of them, maybe they call us back at one or two and they go, yeah, go ahead, you have permission. We need to go have a look in the field itself and determine whether the structure so we can set up the hunt properly. Well, I didn't see them where they went to roost, but yeah, go ahead. Landon just phoned, he said we're all good to go, it's just too wet to swaths, or, or to combine, so he said go ahead and hunt it. <laughs> okay, we're good. He called back. Okay, sounds good, thank you very much. And uh, Landon said it's too wet, they can't combine. Let's get yeah. out of here. Say, where you Don't miss the bus. Uh, a couple minutes later, he phones me back and says, hey, you know what, it's, the swaths are still too wet, so you get in there and kill some geese. <laughs> Yeah, long day. Long day. Good day, though.